Thank you, Chairman Wicker, uh, Ranking Member Schatz, and members of the subcommittee. On behalf of Innovate Mississippi and the Mississippi Coding Academies, I want to thank you for this opportunity to testify today on how we just might be helping bridge this enormous gap which exists between high-tech employer needs and uh, for entry-level programmers and developers and the available resources that they have from our community colleges and four-year colleges. Before I delve into that, and I will be brief with my comments, I want to just say a little bit about Innovate Mississippi. Our mission is to accelerate technology and innovation startups in Mississippi by connecting them to mentors, to investment capital, to service providers. We've helped transform over 1,200 ideas into real companies, and uh, those companies have raised over $170 million in capital, and they've produced about 6,000 jobs. All of that's very important, and we're proud of the fact that we do that with a very small staff of six professionals. We got a budget of a million dollars a year, and half of it comes from private uh, company sponsorships. Our board's made up of private company executives, entrepreneurs, representatives from our research uh, universities, the Institute of Higher Lim uh, Learning, and the Mississippi Community College Board. I'm serving a two-year term as the chairman. But we not only focus on connecting these entrepreneurs with capital and providing mentors, we focus on building an ecosystem that those startups, uh, that allows those startups to thrive. And it was part of that charter that led us to form the Mississippi Coding Academies. A bit of background. In our state alone, there are 1,200 open jobs for coding professionals. Our colleges and universities produce 250 computer science graduates a year. About half of them leave the state. So enormous gap just in our, in our state. At the national level, it's even more compelling. Code.org would tell you that there's a half a million open jobs in programming and development today, and it's going to grow to one million by the year 2020, and uh, there's 43,000 computer science graduates to meet the 500,000 today. So the demands of, a of the digital economy are just going to continue to grow, and things like the app economy that we're discussing here today are going to worsen that gap over time unless we do some things differently. Well, here's what's interesting. At the other end of the spectrum, there are a lot of highly motivated young people who, for various reasons, mostly socioeconomic, who are not able to attend a two- or four-year college. Yet many of them have the basic analytical and the creative skills to become coders. And those jobs will ensure them wages that are equivalent to what many college graduates are going to get, and they are career-type positions, not just dead-end jobs. Now, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but I've had five decades in this information technology business. And I'll tell you this, I have seen it time and time again. You cannot predict, based on background, based on education, who is going to be a good developer, who's going to be a good programmer or coder. Some of the best I've ever known in my companies were music uh, and arts majors. Certainly a good number of them have math and science backgrounds, but you cannot predict who's going to be good at this because there is definitely a creative as well as an analytical component. So what are we doing? Well, in spring of last year, four of us, and I am one of the founders, Senator Wicker, uh, four of us from Innovate Mississippi uh, went up to the little town of Water Valley, Mississippi, where a very innovative program had been started by a couple of C-level executives who uh, uh, had been with a successful uh, technology services company, and they wanted to give something back. They established the Base Camp Coding Academy up there. They wanted to prove that a high school graduate could go through an intensive 11-month program and emerge as what we would call a full-stack developer. That's a programmer who has the ability to see the big picture, the database, the front end, the back end, the the user interface, all the various components. Not necessarily that they can do everything perfectly, but they have the ability to see the big picture and they have the ability to be productive. Well, 
All of the graduates of that first class were hired, hired by companies like C Spire, a regional telecom uh, from uh, regional Mississippi, and also uh, FedEx. And uh, those kids are all now got new and exciting careers in information technology. Well, the founders didn't want to expand beyond the areas that they were in, and so with their permission, uh, we took their ideas and approached the Mississippi Development Authority. And with the wholehearted support of our governor, Phil Bryant, with uh, Glenn Bryant, uh, Glenn McCulloch, who uh, is our executive director of the uh, MDA, Dr. Andrea Mayfield, who's the president of the community colleges, and she has just been wonderful to work with. Uh, she was uh, not territorial at all. She recognized that we were bringing a different spin to this problem, and she's worked uh, jointly with us to make it happen. Today, there are 25 students enrolled in two academies, two different locations in our state. We expect in those locations to add three more classes in June of this year, and we're actively discussing three other locations in the state for 2019, down on the Gulf Coast in Biloxi, over in the Mississippi Delta, an impoverished area, as you all know, and uh, actually a second location that's uh, uh, in the Delta, as we call it, in, uh, in Vicksburg. I'll talk a minute more about that in a, in a few minutes. We already have 130 plus candidates for the, for the 60 positions in the three classes that are starting in June. So we, we're feeling good about that. Well, uh, perhaps we can uh, um, ex expound more on that during uh, the question and answer. Yes, sir, we could. Uh, good. Dr. O, you were recognized. 